and many thanks as well to the organizers for the invitation. I, I'm very pleased to attend this, uh, this meeting. So I'm the, the one who's gonna close this, uh, this day. And for the last part, we are going to take a step back from eukaryotic viruses and uh, have a look at the interactions between bacterial phages or phages and their bacterial preys. And in particular, I'll show you how the viral anti-CRISPR protein called ACR2A6 um, uses a, a, a unique allosteric inhibition mode to inactivate the bacterial CRISPR-Cas9 immunity. So first, a uh, few words about uh, the field. So since the discovery of the uh, anti-CRISPR proteins in um, 2013, the number of structure function analyses of this protein uh, has just kept growing. And this is because first, uh, this protein uh, provide valuable information on phage host interactions and evolution. And second, these proteins are natural uh, inhibitors of CRISPR-Cas systems uh, form a, a reservoir of biotechnological tools that could be used as off switches for better control of CRISPR-Cas based technologies, which are nowadays widely used in uh, basic research. Uh, these technologies uh, uh, offer also promising uh, therapeutic applications to treat genetic diseases, and they've also given rise to a fast, accurate, and easy to implement uh, molecular diagnostic kits to detect uh, uh, emergent uh, viruses. And uh, this uh, ongoing uh, CRISPR-Cas and anti-CRISPR craze uh, has uh, culminated in the uh, 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry that was awarded to Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dubna for the development of a method for genome editing with the CRISPR-Cas9 genetic scissors which since the proof of principle published less than a, a decade ago, uh, have become the, the, the famous versatile uh, tool for genome edition. And behind these um, impressive technological advances, there is a story of battle for survival between phages, which are the most abundant biological, biological entities on Earth, and uh, bacteria with an evolutionary arms race and correlated adaptations of their defense and attack mechanisms. And from the bacterial side, bacteria have evolved an arsenal of antiviral tools, um, including the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 immunity, which acts by cleaving uh, foreign nucleic acids, so the the invading DNA, uh, in a second specific manner. And so briefly, how does this CRISPR-Cas9 system works? So first, um, upon acquisition, small pieces of viral uh, DNA are integrated into a CRISPR locus as spacers in between conserved repeat sequences. And um, this CRISPR array, which contains um, spacers from different origins, constitute a memory of past viral infection. Then biogenesis, so this CRISPR array is then transcribed and uh, processed into small CRISPR RNA that associate with the Cas9 endonuclease to form ribonucleoprotein complexes called uh, surveillance complexes that patrol in the cell, uh, ready to get into the next step, which is interference. And so during interference, the surveillance complexes are in charge of target, uh, target recognition and cleavage, which aborts the viral infection cycle. And so the target DNA uh, called the protospacer uh, has to be uh, complementary to the CRISPR RNA sequence. And here it's also important to note that uh, interference requires the presence of a small DNA motif called the PAM for protospacer adjacent motif uh, that is recognized by Cas9 and allows self and non-self discrimination by the host. So from a mechanistic point of view, the molecular mechanism uh, of uh, DNA binding and cleavage is well known and has largely been documented uh, by comprehensive structural, biochemical, and biophysical studies on uh, Streptococcus pyogenes Cas9, which is the the model in the field. And uh, to give you an idea of how Cas9 structural uh, conformational dynamics is critical for its activity, so target binding and cleavage. I, I'm about to show you a structural snapshot of Cas9 at work. 
So here you have the APO forum of CAS9, in which I've highlighted in red the PAM interacting domain and in yellow and green the nucleus domains for HNH domain and the real C domain. And upon RNA binding and formation of uh, the, the surveillance complex, Cas9 undergoes a large conformational changes leading to the formation of a DNA binding competent state with essentially the formation of the PAM binding site over here. Um, then PAM binding here is the critical event that triggers a cascade of structural rearrangements that assist target uh, binding. And so target binding corresponds to the formation of an RNA DNA heteroduplex. And uh, the, the formation of a complete DNA RNA heteroduplex then induces the reorientation and activation of the nucleus domains uh, leading to the activated state of the surveillance complex. And so basically what has made uh, CRISPR-Cas9 so famous worldwide is that with one protein, Cas9, and one RNA molecule that can be easily programmed to target virtually any sequences, you have in hand um, a versatile tool for uh, genome addition and manipulation. So bacteria uh, are harmed with uh, a powerful CRISPR-Cas9 immunity to defend uh, themselves against predators. And on the phage side, without much surprise, phages have evolved a counterattack strategies. And while uh, mutation and deletions of uh, protospacer in their genome uh, can generally bypass CRISPR-Cas9 immunity, some phages bring also uh, into play anti-CRISPR proteins to inactivate CRISPR-Cas9 immunity. And basically, these proteins can um, block uh, the, 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 the CRISPR-Cas9 immunity by uh, interfering with uh, any of these steps. And um, so anti-CRISPR proteins are widespread in prophages, virulent phages, and other mobile genetic elements, including um, conjugative plasmids, for instance. Uh, to date, there are uh, nearly 90 anti-CRISPR families, and uh, about a third of them uh, inactivate CRISPR-Cas9. And these proteins are highly diverse, they're different from another, and they do not share much re resemblance with proteins of non-function, which raises question um, relating to their uh, mode of action. And so basically, how do they uh, inhibit CRISPR-Cas9? With which step do they interfere? And what are the molecular mechanisms involved? And so in this context, we uh, embarked on the structural and functional analysis of the anti-CRISPR protein ACR2A6, which was discovered by our collaborator, so the, the group of Sylvain Moineau in uh, the Universi Université Laval, Quebec. And so they, they discovered this protein in virulent phages infecting Streptococcus thermophilus. And uh, they showed that ACR2A6 uh, is active against ST1 castine in the host, and this protein is also able to block uh, CRISPR-Cas9 gene addition uh, in, in human cells. And so when we started this study, our knowledge of CRISPR-Cas9 uh, anti-CRISPR proteins was limited to orthosteric inhibitors that occlude the PAM binding site, thereby preventing uh, target binding, or that occlude the um, nucleus active site, thereby preventing DNA cleavage, or that occlude the RNA binding site, thereby uh, preventing uh, formation of surveillance complex. And with ACR2A6, we found uh, uh, that it's an allosteric inhibitor that affects Cas9 structural dynamics associated with target binding. So since bioinformatic predictions yielded basically no information on ACR2A6 mode of action, we first determined its crystal structure by uh, its crystal structure. Uh, to get insight into, into its function. And uh, so ACR2A6 form dimers and solution, and here you have the 3D structure of a dimer showing a novel uh, alpha beta fold, which was not really helpful. And at that time, we didn't have in hand Cas9 uh, and its RNA, so we could not go further in our analysis. But based on this dimeric assembly with uh, elix turn, elix like motif at the bottom here, we hypothesize that this dimer uh, could actually bind uh, to the RNA-DNA heteroduplex and thereby um, 
blocking Cas9 activity, but it turned out that we were totally wrong. So a few months later, we eventually managed to produce uh, Cas9, a recomb a recombinant Cas9 and uh, in vitro transcribed RNA. And we, uh, we first investigated the interaction between ACR26 and Cas9 using biolayer interferometry. And so basically we immobilized ACR26 at the tip of a biosensor, which was then dipped into ApoCas9 or the RNA bond form. And we monitored real-time association and dissociation. And as you can see here with this um, green curve, we showed that ACR26 strongly binds to Cas9 to the RNA bond form with basically no dissociation while it does not interact at all with the ApoCas9. And here it's a negative control since we knew that ACH6 is not active against SPCAS9. And since, uh, based on the structure, crystal structure I've just shown you, we hypothesized that ACH6 could bind to the RNA DNA terodeuplex. We also tested the interaction between ACH6 and this assembly in which the RNA was pre annealed to the target sequence. And we obtained a, a binding curve that is similar to the, to the one obtained in the absence of target DNA. So these experiments showed that ACR2A6 strongly bind to the RNA bond form of SD1Cas9 and recognize a, a protein surface or a mixed protein RNA surface that is formed upon RNA binding. So next, in order to, um, to get further insights into the ACR2A6 molecular mechanism, we determined the 3D, the 3D structure of this um, highly stable complex using cryo-air. And uh, since we showed that this target DNA does not affect ACR26 binding properties, and since we obtained the best greens in, uh, in terms of particle distribution in the presence of this target DNA, we actually used this complex, this mixture, Cas9, RNA, DNA, and ACR2A6 as a good representative model of the ACR2A6 bond uh, Cas9 surveillance complex. So the data were collected uh, in Milan in, on the Talos Artica uh, uh, in the platform um, run by Martino Bolognesi and Paolo Sweck at that time. And so 2D classification of the data set revealed the presence of two populations one with um, rather compact particles with Cas9 typical uh, morphology, and another with uh, elongated uh, and, symm uh, and symmetric particles with dimensions consistent of two Cas9 molecules. And the final 3D reconstruction at overall resolution of 3 and 3.2 Armstrong reveal a one-to-one -one assembly here. So one ACR2A6 dimer bound to one Cas9, and a two-to-one uh, two -two assembly here with a, a one ACR2A6 dimer bound to two Cas9 molecule. And the refined atomic model corresponding to this monomeric assembly and to this dimeric assembly match closely, um, thereby excluding any uh, major conformational changes associated with Cas9 dimerization. So here, we, if we have a look first at uh, Cas9 and the structure of Cas9, so at, um, the structure of ST1 Cas9 was not known when, when we started this, uh, this project. And so we, we used an homology model and uh, we manually built the diverging and, and missing regions. And he, here you have so Cas9 with the typical beloved ar architecture of Cas9 molecules, with here the um, DNA RNA uh, heteroduplex in between the two lobes. Um, in our structure, the nucleus domains are incomplete, and this is quite common for a pre-activated state because the nucleus domains are highly flexible and, and therefore not well resolved in the reconstruction. And so again, here in red, the PAM interacting domain and just above it, the wedge domain. And if we have now a look at the ACR26 bond form, so the monomeric assembly just for simplicity, one can see that uh, ACR26 binds to a large protein RNA interface that is well separated from Cas9 functional sites, which are the DNA binding site over here and the nucleus domain here. And this ACR2A6 binding interface primarily involves the PAM interacting domain and the wedge domain at the back face of the molecule 
if we consider that the front, fa front face is where the, the DNA binding site is located. And so from a structural point of view, ACR2A6 presents the, the characteristic of an allosteric inhibitory protein. And we confirm that ACR2A6 uh, does block uh, Cas9 activity by setting up an in vitro DNA cleavage assay in which we incubated the, um, the Cas9 surveillance complex plus ACR2A6 plus a target DNA containing the PAM. And so as you can see here, in the absence of ACR2A6, Cas9 cleaves its target, it is active, while in the presence of ACR2A6, the Cas9 activity is completely abolished. So ACR2A6 binds to an allosteric site on Cas9 and it blocks its activity. So uh, next, since ACR2A6 binds to Cas9 components, Involved in DNA binding, we tested whether SCA2A6 affects Cas9 DNA binding using biolayer interferometry again. But this time, we immobilized the target DNA containing the PAM at the tip of the biosensor that was then dipped into uh, the surveillance complex in the presence or absence of Cas9. And as you can see here with these, with these binding curves, um, even in the presence of ACR2A6, the Cas9 is still able to bind to DNA, but with a markedly reduced uh, binding affinity, which is compatible with a negative uh, allosteric action of ACR2A6 on Cas9 activity. And uh, this implies that in the context of um, infected cells in which the concentration of DNA substrate is necessarily lower than in a biochemical assay, this reduction in Cas9 DNA binding affinity likely prevents target binding within cells. So next, to further explore the functional impact of um, ACR2A6 on uh, Cas9 binding, DNA binding, our collaborators, so the group of Yannick Doyon uh, at Université Laval, Quebec again, uh, used a base editing system um, constituted by a catalytically impaired Cas9 fused to a CTD in the aminase. And when this system binds to its target, CG base, base pairs are converted into TA base pairs, which provides a sensitive readout for DNA band. And so while this system uh, efficiently converted CG base pairs into TA at different targets, uh, the co-expression of ACR2A6 completely abolished base editing and thereby DNA binding. So all in all, there's structural, biochemical, and cellular assays show that ACR2A6 is an allosteric inhibitor of Cas9 that reduces uh, Cas9 DNA binding affinity, uh, they are uh, leading to the uh, inhibition of target DNA binding within cells. So next to get further uh, insights into the structural events mediating the allosteric communication between the ACR26 binding sites and the DNA binding sites, we um, incubated uh, the ACR26 uh, bound surveillance complex with an excess of a partial DNA duplex, and we analyze this mixture by priori. So here it's important to note first that we actually forced DNA binding to this system, even though we knew that it is that is not relevant in vivo, but the point was really to get as much uh, information as possible on the molecular events, on the molecular mode of action of ACR traces. And second, since ACR2A6 binds to Cas9 components involved in PAM binding, we use this partial duplex to actually focus our analysis on PAM binding, which is the primary event of target DNA binding. Um, and so in this sample, there were only very few dimeric assemblies left, and we mainly observed two kinds of monomeric assemblies. Uh, which correspond to the, the DNA bound Cas9 in the presence or absence of ACR2A6. And so here you have representative 2D, class, 2D classes and the final 3D reconstruction at again around 3 Armstrong resolution. And so the disappearance of the dimeric assemblies and the appearance of this ACR2A6 free Cas9, while we started from this highly stable complex 
indicates the structural link between the ACA traces binding site and the DNA binding sites. And uh, moreover, the structural comparison between the ACA traces bond uh, Cas9 uh, in gray before DNA binding and with colors after DNA binding show Cas9 uh, backbone shifts only in the PAM interacting domain and the wedge domain to accommodate the, the, the PAM motif. And also, in uh, the presence of the PAM induces uh, a shift of ACR2A6 away from, from Cas9, uh, ex explaining the, the disruption of the dynamic assembly. And so this PAM-induced structural changes observed in the ACR2A6 binding site and the PAM binding elements uh, are in agreement with an allosteric linkage between the ACR2A6 binding site and the PAM binding site. And we confirmed, again using biolayering uh, interferometry, that the presence of the PAM here uh, affects the, the binding properties between ACR2A6 and Cas9. And as you can see here with this binding curve, um, the, um, the ACR2A6 affinity is uh, reduced and the association is much lower and the dissociation is faster. And lastly, uh, the structural comparison between the DNA bound Cas9 uh, in uh, yellow and uh, the same form with uh, ACR2A6 shows that ACR2A6 modifies the structure of Cas9 pine binding elements and likely Cas9 structural dynamics that is associated with PAM binding. So, um, as take home messages, um, so first, uh, I've just shown you that ACR2A6 uh, uses a unique allosteric inhibition mode to prevent Cas9 target DNA binding. So ACR2A6 binds to an allosteric site on Cas9. It affects Cas9 structural dynamics that is associate, associated with DNA binding, which reduces um, Cas9 uh, DNA binding affinity and thereby prevent target binding within cells. Also, ACR2A6 can bind to and inactivate two Cas9 molecules at a time, which make it a potent inhibitor that could um, block all Cas9 interference activity, uh, even when present at low concentration. And lastly, to give you a flavor of what's going on in the field uh, presently, so this um, Cas9 allosteric inhibition mode adds itself to highly diverse um, inhibition mechanisms. And for instance, at the moment in, in the lab, we are, we are working on anti-CRISPR protein that uh, degrade the, the RNA and thereby uh, dis destabilizing the surveillance complex. And with that, I would just like to uh, thank all, uh, all the person who, who were and are still involved in, in this anti-CRISPR Cas9 protein project. So again, our collaborators in University Laval, Quebec, oh, my sorry, my mouse is not responding anymore. And uh, so in the group, so the, the host pathogen is interaction group is held by Alain Roussel and um, we, are, we have different uh, topics in the group. And so the those who are involved with myself in this project are Olivier, Claire, Pierre, Beatrice and Sylvia. And uh, for funding agency, uh, that's the INR. And uh, with this, I'm, uh, I'm happy to take any questions.